Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with my 2022 best fountain pens of 22 video and also the worst fountain pens of 2022. Um, I did one of these videos a couple of years ago and it, it, it proved to be quite popular, so I thought I'll make this an annual occurrence. Um, yeah, basically, I mean, if you're new to my channel, thanks for uh, coming by. And I concentrate on the, if you like, more affordable fountain pens. Um, so don't expect to see this is the best fountain pen of 2022 and it costs £500 or £1,000, something like that. Not going to happen on this channel. But uh, what I do every year, I get to the end of the year and I go through my various journals, um, anywhere that I do lots of writing. Here's a Oxford black and red notebook, hard case bound notebook that uh, I quite like using. Um, and I go through those journals at the end of the year and I actually look at which of the pens that I used because I make notes on all of them. I'll show you an example. I mean, this is just a brief list in the front of all the pens that I've used in this journal. Um, and I started, when did I start this journal? This one commenced on the 26th of October 2022. Um, and we've gone through all of this year, so it's, yeah, it's holding out well. Um, and I go through all of the pens and inks that I've used, and I review myself what, uh, what those fountain pens were, and which ones I kept going back to, which ones I kept re-inking, refilling. Um, and which ones did I actually enjoy using? And of course, throughout this whole process, there are some fountain pens that I pick up, buy, whatever, and um, they turn out to be not very good. Um, and I tend to make a note on things like that, how they write, how they perform, do they hard start if they've been left unused for more than a week, things like that. So there are some obvious sort of, you know, good points and bad points in these uh, these journals of mine. And I have a look at those every year and just basically see which were the pens that I actually think were fantastic and which ones were, uh, were um, not so good. So what I'm going to do, and this is in no particular order, it's not a top 10, it's nothing like that. When I get close to the best fountain pens, for me, this is my opinion, what have what have I used in 2022? When I get close to the uh, to the absolute best fountain pens in 2022, I will let you know in this video. So stay uh, stay watching, and uh, you'll find out. So 2022 saw me use an awful lot more pens than 2021. We moved house last year in 2021 and it just turned into a bit of a uh, disaster. And what I started doing, I've mentioned this in my uh, other videos as well, is re-inking pens rather than just cycling through, cleaning pens, putting more pens into rotation. I, I just could not be bothered. So I started re-inking pens and one or two of those have been inked up for a very, very long time, more than two years in some cases, because I enjoy using them so much rather than clean them i just think you know what it's just quicker to refill them and get on and carry on writing so without further ado let's get started so 2022 um there were some new releases i purchased some and unfortunately with time constraints and everything else there are some pens which i purchased in 2022 which i still haven't got around to using in january 2023 when i'm filming this video um, so they're obviously out of the picture, um, but there are some pens which have been absolute mainstays, real solid pens throughout 2022, and also some of them I've still used throughout, or at least part of 2021, so these are real pens that I have absolutely loved using and kept re-inking, so let's get, uh, let's get going. Right, so I did a video recently of this fountain pen um, and compared it with a Jinhao 80. This is the Lamy 2000. Iconic pen, lovely clip, Macrolon, nice design, I love the design. 
and it's a great fountain pen don't get me wrong it was my grail pen and i talked about that in my grail pens video as well um do go through my videos and have a look and see what else takes your fancy if you find this particular video interesting anyway Lamy 2000 let's get started on my rodeo pad brand new rodeo pad got the gridded version um i shall just get my notes back out because i don't want to make any glaring mistakes which i am prone to these days you know stuff happens so i've got nowhere to put this this will have to go down here Lamy 2000 remember this is not in any particular order yes you can see that Lamy 2000 um and this is the uh i believe the fine nib it's gold nib and the ink is diamine twilight Twilight, there's a H in there, trying to write with the camera in the way. And I really love the Lamy 2000. It's a fantastic fountain pen, but there are some issues, which I have talked about in previous videos. Yes, I absolutely recommend it. Is it the greatest pen of all time? No, definitely not. And you will see later on in this video why. But I re-inked this pen late in 2022 and I've been using it ever since. And I, yeah, I, I do enjoy writing with this pen again. It's had a, uh, a rest for a couple of years, but now I'm really quite into this fountain pen again. So this will probably remain inked up throughout 2023. So that's the first pen. Right, now the next pen, a cheapy. Platinum, oops, Platinum Prefount. Now, the Platinum Prefount is, in my opinion, one of the best, cheapest pens you can get. And they're exceptionally useful because it has Platinum's patented slip and seal capping mechanism, which basically means that the nib will not dry out. If you don't use this for months on end, it should not dry out. Um, I've never really tested that, but I always have a fountain pen filled with red ink in my pen rotation because I do use red ink, red ink occasionally. If I just need to make a really important note in my journal or whatever it is, I've, I've got a red pen, red ink pen on hand. And this is the, uh, I think it's something like Vermilion Orange version. Pop cap. Nothing fancy, it's got a steel platinum nib and it writes exceedingly well. Um, let's just do this bit platinum prefount. This is a medium nib, which is, in my opinion, a Western medium, which is quite unusual for any of the Japanese manufacturers. Um, the ink is Waterman, uh, Waterman, there's an R there, uh, Waterman, uh, uh, Audacious Red. I just realised I'm going from capital to handwriting, which I know many people can't read. I'll just make an observation while I'm on that subject, actually. The Fountain Pen community has various social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and all the rest of it. And it always amazes me when you see people who, they basically get a piece of paper with the Fountain Pen and they write some sort of phrase, put the pen there, take a photograph and go, yeah, give me a like, basically. And I look at it and it's like, I can't read it. The handwriting, the lettering, yes, it looks lovely, but it's unreadable. <laughs> It's just, it, it makes me laugh every time I see that. Um, you know, it, you might have neat handwriting, you might have beautiful handwriting, but if people can't read it, yeah, well done. So anyway, Platinum Prefound, excellent everyday carry. And I have eye-dropped this, as you can see. And this pen really does lend itself well to being eye-dropped. Basically, unscrew the uh, 
the section from the barrel, put some silicone grease on the threads under there and fill it up to about there with ink, just below the threads. Screw it back together and you've got a huge ink capacity, which is really good because I don't want to keep having to re-ink a red pen that I don't use very often. So this sits in my everyday carry fountain pen rotation at home. I know it's always going to write first time every time in, with no hard starts due to the slip and seal mechanism. And I've got a ton of ink in here. So this is not going to need re-inking very often. Useful, useful pen. Um, uh, right, let's see, where are we? I'm not actually going to put that one in there just yet. That's erring towards the side of um, not being particularly good. Yeah. This pen, this is a more expensive fountain pen. It's a beautiful fountain pen. It's a really chunky, lovely fountain pen to hold. And this is the Edison Collier. Edison is a modern pen. Um, yeah, don't hear the name and think that this is some vintage Edison. This is one of the newer models from Edison as it stands as a modern company. But, so there we go, nice big, Steel nib, Ooh, bashing the uh, tripod, trying to write around the camera. Maybe some. Oh. I'll tell you what. Let's keep it consistent. Maybe some collier, and I believe this might be the midnight blue. Midnight blue. Uh, it's a fine nib, and the ink is diamine. Oh dear, I have to revert back to my notes, sorry. This is the trouble when you've got so many fountain pens inked up, you sometimes just completely lose track. Yeah, this is diamine twilight as well. I thought it was, just needed to double check. So let's have a quick comparison between the Lamy 2000 and the Edison Collier writing. So the Lamy 2000 up here. Yeah, very, very comparable. Um, and which pen do I actually prefer writing with? I would say the Edison Collier. I actually like it more. It's it, The design isn't as nice in my opinion as the Lamy 2000 but it's a nicer pen to hold the material okay it's an acrylic but it's really really beautiful there's excellent chatoyancy section matching section hourglass section a little bit on the small side but this is a chunky pen and it's very very comfortable to hold nice big nib and it's good to write with so the Edison Collier has remained inked up for a very long time well over 18 months. Next one. Mm. Yes, it's been inked up a lot. Is it an absolute favourite pen? Yeah, I suppose it is, because I love how quick it is to refill this pen. This is the Twisby Go. This is the clear version. Now, clear, they're all clear. All the Twisby Goes are clear. It's basically a blue version, a colourless version. So this is the colourless version. I know they say it's clear, but it's colourless. Um, a smoke grey version, the blue version. So anyway, all sorts of different nib sizes, pop cap. Standard Twisby fare, to be honest. It's consistent, it writes well. This is a medium nib. I'm finding it a little bit skippy here, actually, but that's probably my writing angle. This is another Waterman ink. Waterman Tender Purple. And the good thing about this pen is that it really does just work. Very, very rarely get any hard starts. It writes, it does exactly what you want it to do. I'm just thinking I'm not even doing a full thing on this. I'll come back to this in a moment. Let me just do some squiggly swirls. 
platinum prefab really does lay down ink very well. It's a medium nib, but it's actually quite quite broad and quite wet. Um, Edison Collier, if you're interested in uh, the squiggles, we'll compare those with the Rami 2000 above. I'll just do that before we return to the Twisby Go. Yeah, I'm... They do prefer the way the Edison Collier writes to the Lamy 2000. Anyway, Twisby Go, very industrial look, pop cap. There is a nice cap seal in there. Good to hold, nice. You can post it and it's not too heavy. It's, you know, very light cap. Good pen, good pen, but so easy to re-ink. So it's got this... The barrel um, ink reservoir is in here near the section. Basically, you push this plunger down and it's like a piston. So it just draws the ink up through the feed and fills this ink reservoir here. And it's easy. A couple of pumps and you've refilled the pen. Really easy to clean too, but I just can't be bothered because I keep, keep refilling it. So it just keeps going. So I'm really, really happy with the, uh, the Twisby Go. It's in my opinion, one of the best beginner fountain pens. Definitely one that, if you're interested in a low-cost Twisby to see what they're like, and you can handle the design. I know it really is not to everybody's taste, but I, I, I like the industrial design of it. And it writes, and it's got a good ink capacity, and it's really quick to fill. So, yeah, I, I, I love the Twisby Go. So that's why it's in my list for this year. Um, right, let me go through, I need to just double check the model number because I do get this one mixed up because there are some similar um, fountain pens to this one in the lineup from this next company. Um, so many ink notes, yeah it is, okay. German manufacturer, Faber-Castell. This is the Faber-Castell grip. And the one thing that always sort of threw me, really, was you expect this to be a very grippy fountain pen. These raised, different coloured knobs are actually hard plastic, so it's not really grippy at all. It's, um, think, think of it as a Lamy Safari. There is a slightly triangular really long section which is quite grippy it's not rubberized as such it's, it's got a rubbery sort of coating but i think it's really quite comfortable it's, it's nicer to hold than the lamy uh, safari so anyway let's get on and do the writing sample of a castell grip there are other colors available um, this is the dapple grey version. With a broad nib. Now Faber-Castell steel nibs, quite small, but they always seem to run a little bit finer than you'd expect. The ink is a uh, Sites Kreuznach. Slate grey, which is quite a dark grey ink, and in this really nice wet nib, it gives a very, very black ink with the amount it lays down. But there is, as you'll see, a real element of greyness in there that doesn't really come through too well in the uh, in the camera, but it's it's. It's a really nice grey ink, very cheap in comparison to some of the grey inks and a good fountain pen. I like it, I like this pen a lot. It's not the most exciting fountain pen, but it's a workhorse pen. It's one of these pens that I tend to just have knocking about the house. If I need a fountain pen, I'll go and pick this up. Don't mind too much if it gets dropped in the, uh, in the garden and stuff. I think there's probably a bit of a scuff there, you see. But uh, 
No, it's not a scuff. That is the actual Faber Castell logo and everything printed on the side. <laughs> trying to do things through the camera this is what happens yeah i like it faber castell grip definitely a recommended fountain pen chinese fountain pens Jin Hao. now Jin Hao 100 centennial this has got a fine nib and i do find it hard starts a little bit because that cap is not very well sealed. This finial up here actually dropped out. It actually just fell out. It wasn't even glued in place. It was just kind of pushed in. So I've re-glued it, but I suspect there is a bit of a uh, air leak into the cap there, which is why this does hard start. But I've not had that issue with um, other Jin Hao 100 Centennial fountain pens. Fine nib, usually sold as mediums. Uh, this is the yellow version. I, I really love the yellow and black um, version of this fountain pen. I just think it looks quite cool. You're getting a lot of skips here. Uh, the ink is a diamine ink. Diamine 1864 blue black. And I honestly believe that the Jin Hao 100 Centennial was the thing which actually got me back into Jin Hao fountain pens. They had produced some rather mediocre looking designs. Cheap, but not very interesting. But the Centennial, I love the design and I think it's really, really good. Loads of different colours available. Um, some of which seem to come and go, uh, different clips on them, but I love this yellow and black version with the ball clip, really like that. So very much an everyday use pen, used it a lot in 2022. Um, this next one is a borderline pen because I have found occasionally there is a bit of ink starvation. And I think that this is one of the most underrated fountain pens. It's an unusual capping mechanism. It's it's a nice design. I quite like it. It's a metal pen. It's really quite heavy. Um, but I love the capping mechanism. It is, in my mind, one of the best quick-draw fountain pens. This is the um, uh, <laughs> Monteverde Ritma Blue. This is the blue version. Gun metal polished cap that is magnetic, so it just, <laughs> and it's brilliant, it's secure, it does turn around a bit, but I really, really like it, and this is a great pen for just taking quick notes, when you're journaling and you want to make some notes of something else, you go back to the book, you can just cap it and uncap it, it just clicks into place, and the stub nib is really, really good, let's move this here, so Monteverde, Monteverde. This is the trouble trying to write through the camera. Monteverde. Ritma. Ritma. Blue. Blue. And this is a stub nib. This ink is the same as the uh, Jin Hao up here. It's a uh, Diamine uh, 1864 Blue Black. And this stub nib is really, really cool to write with. I mean, look at that. Really, oh, blimey, bashing the tripod again. Really, really nice line variation depending on the stroke. And overall, it does lay down ink very, 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 very well. Um, but I have had some ink starvation issues occasionally. It seems to be very sporadic, no idea why. Maybe it needs a bit of a clean because the stub nib may dig into the paper occasionally and you get paper fibres 
in between the tines and I love this this nib let's try and get the color there so it's a uh, PVD coated so it's, it's, it actually matches the barrel of the pen so you've got the gunmetal elements of course magnetic posting but it does become a very long pen um very cool very very cool love this pen really really nice great fun especially with the stub nib so monteverde ritma definitely one of my favorites for 2022 and also 20, 2021 because it was used so much throughout that period um mm, which one next now 2022 bit of a strange year this is the colt pens special edition there we go colt pens special edition platinum jubilee caveco sport fountain pen exclusive to colt pens here in the uk I will put my Colt Pens discount link in the description down below. If you use that, you may need to use, may need to use a new email address if you've already got a Colt Pens account, but I'll put the description down there. Basically, if you order using my, it's not an affiliate link, but it's, it's basically, you'll get 10% off. I'll get a voucher for 10%, so helps everyone else. Anyway, Colt Pens. So this was released for the Platinum Jubilee. Um, I'm not going to get into any political debates over this, so please do not comment on anything political. This is my channel. I'll make my own comments. Cheers for that. Um, but anyway, the, the Queen celebrated her Platinum Jubilee in 2022, and then sadly, later in 2022, she passed away. Um, so this is a bit of a poignant pen because it was... It wasn't, I didn't celebrate the Platinum Jubilee, I thought, with the current cost of living crisis and the way that the UK is at the moment, the extravagance of celebrating, it just seemed very out of place. Um, but I loved our Queen, and unfortunately when she passed, you know, it's, it, was, it was a sad event for me. But anyway, this was Colt Pen's special edition to celebrate the Platinum Jubilee. Uh, right, let's just try and get the whole title in. I've got something to say about this nib. Caveco. Oh, for the love of... I can't remember how to... Calve. Can't even spell Caveco. Oh, right, I'm beginning to wonder if I'm getting some sort of dementia. Try again. Is it even on the cap? Bloody hell. Yeah, I am spelling it correctly. <laughs> Anyway, right, Caveco Sport, Colt Pens, um, it was a special edition, Platinum Jubilee, all right, 2022 here, just for the sake of it, with a stub. Nib, that skip was me. And yeah, this is Pure Pens Inc. Pure Pens Flower of Scotland, which is a great ink. It's one of my absolute favourite purple inks. And I'll talk to you about this nib in a minute. Scotland, there we go. So this is the stub nib, and it's the first. Oh, that skip was probably me actually. First stub nib that I've actually had from Caveco, and I think it's fantastic. I mean, it really is. 
no hard starts, right first time every time. Brilliant nib. Really, really love it. Definitely will be buying more Caveco Sports in the future with a stub nib. Yeah, really enjoy using this pen. I've eye-droppered it. So, you know, the whole barrel is full of ink and it's it's a brilliant fountain pen. So that is, I suppose, for me, it's going to be one of those pens that I'm going to remember 22, 2022 by. So, yeah. Oh, mm, yeah, definitely this pen. Twisby, another Twisby, Tw Twisby Eco. Let's get this going. Twisby Eco. This is the Jade version, and I really love this Jade version. Another one of their special edition colours. Uh, Twisby Eco Jade, and this is a stub nib again. And the ink is diamine cool green and i love writing with this pen it's really really wet lays down ink really well the stub nib is great fun lots of good shading really really love it i think this is a fantastic ink for this pen um it's a twisby eco yeah i can say the same about the Caveco sport you know the pens that everyone knows i love it i i think the twisby eco is a great pen piston filler holds lots of ink i don't have to keep refilling it all the time because it holds so much it's great i love writing with it the stub nib is absolutely brilliant there's no sharp edges i mean even the monteverde ritma has a bit of a sharp edge but this doesn't this is just really really good caps nice and easily tightly doesn't dry out really recommend it i know that the twisby cracking issue where i don't know sections and various bits of the material crack of the pen I've never experienced it, thankfully, but I have heard that it started to resurface, and I know that the more recently released Twisby Swipe definitely has cracking issues where the clip enters the cap. Um, that is a definite known issue. So anyway, not going to talk about that too much. Um, right, do I go down this road? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm going to go go for this pen because... This next pen was an absolute, I'd say, joy to discover. Opus 88, Japanese eyedropper fountain pen. So, yep, lots of turns to unscrew the cap. Let's unscrew, unscrew the valve at the back to let the ink flow in so we don't get any issues. Let's go for it. Opus 88 Coloro. This is the teal version. I've got a broad steel nib. The ink is Octopus Inks Teeth Green. Octopus Inks, which means dark green. Teeth Green. And oh my god, this is an absolute fire hose of a pen. This is the first pen in five years I have ever been able to say, yeah, this is a fire hose. This lays down tons and tons of ink, but it's so good. It is just such a great pen to write with. Definitely one of my absolute favourite pens to write with of 2022. Really phenomenal broad nib. Smooth, chucks down the ink. I mean, you can see it's still not quite dry there. There we go. Chloro, that is still soaking wet. Really, really good. I know it's got its disadvantages, but yeah, 
really, really fantastic. Um, mm, now, am I close to saying which are the best? I'm getting there, definitely getting there. And this will please a lot of people who are watching my videos, uh, who are watching this video, who don't watch my other videos, because my fountain pen journey is indeed a journey. And if you haven't really followed me from the start, it's going to be a lot of catching up. But I actually love Lamy. I love Lamy fountain pens. And when I do videos like this, best of 2022, 2020, wherever it is, and I don't include Alarmy, people go nuts in the comment and they basically criticise. So to all you haters and everyone out there who go, oh, there's no Alarmies, well, the bloody is this year. So here you go, Alarmy Safari. Happy now? I've been using the Alarmy Safari for a very, very long time. <laughs> um, and I have had one of these in my fountain pen rotation for ages. There is always a Lamy Safari throughout 2022 into 2021. Always a Lamy Safari, inked up, ready to go. And I love using them. This is a fine, and this is just Lamy blacking. Nothing fancy, workhorse fountain pen, Seriously robust, writes well, no issues whatsoever, though I have had quite a number of very badly tuned Lamy nibs. Um, Lamy does not guarantee quality, remember, you know, just because you're buying a Lamy because they're recommended, um, it doesn't mean that this is going to be the ideal beginner's fountain pen because I have had quite a high percentage of Lamy Safari nibs, Lamy Studio nibs, which are pretty bad and have actually needed retuning. But sometimes you get a really good one. This is a good one. So the Lamy Safari, definitely one of my fountain pens of 2022 because it is such a good, reliable, kickabout pen. I like it. Yellow version, once again, quite cool. I like yellow fountain pens. I wish there were more yellow fountain pens. I do like them. Any ink colour goes with them. As I say in all of my videos, which brings me on to the next pen. This is borderline. Is this a good fountain pen? Isn't, a good, isn't it a good fountain pen? Narwhal original yellow tang. So you've got this clear acrylic, yellow acrylic with white swirls which take on the yellow and so you get the depth you get these sort of ribbons of 3d ribbon throughout the material and this pen was used an awful lot throughout 2022 um no i'll, I'll write narwhal because this is what it was sold as narwhal but it's now you can fill out with Twisby and go and change your name. Yeah, good on you, Norwell. <laughs> that showed them. Made the name even more complicated. Um, and this is the original. So this is the Norwell original fountain pen. Which they've upgraded because there were quite a few issues with the piston filling mechanism cracking and shearing off and doing all sorts of stuff. So yeah, you, it, it, it's not been a great journey for Norwell in 2022. Redesigning things for the original fountain pen back in the day, two or three years ago, then re-releasing it in some rather cheap looking, horrible colors. Um, yeah, I, I kind of, <laughs> yeah, Norwell has not been Brilliant. This is a broad steel nib. Novel original yellow tank colour. Uh, broad steel nib. This is Waterman Mysterious Blue Ink. I'm not going to have a lot of room on this page. Waterman Mysterious Blue. And the 
funny thing is... Ah, there we go. A few skippy bits. It is laying down ink. Now, when I came to review this fountain pen, I did find that it was skipping way more on Rhodia paper than it does on Oxford Notebook paper. And I'd been using the Oxford Notebook with this fountain pen extensively, doing an awful lot of writing, doing maybe five, six refills of this piston filler fountain pen. No issues whatsoever, enjoying the broad nib. But on Rhodia paper, I did find it a little bit more skippy. So just bear that in mind. But it's been a very, very well used fountain pen throughout 2022. Convenient because it holds so much ink. Now, let's get on to. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm. I'm actually not going to include that next pen. But I may well say that this could be. Is this going to be it? I just bear with me one minute while I have a quick read through my notes because I'm. I'm not hundred percent convinced about all of this. No, I'm I'm actually no, I'm gonna I'm, I'm I have had to change my mind at the last minute and I've got ink absolutely everywhere. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm not gonna go down that road. Um yeah. Fancy pens. <laughs> Let's try and rub some of this off. Rub it on my palms, then it doesn't stain the top half of my hand quite so much. Do I go for it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to say it. What is the best fountain pen of 2022? I'll tell you what the second best is. Pelican. Pelican M200 or M205. I have two inked up here. Unfortunately, for months, about 19, 20 months, I had a, uh, a black Pelican M205 inked up. And that was my everyday carry. Wrote with it all the time, kept refilling it, loved it, but moved on to some other pens. So we've got two Pelican um, M200 fountain pens here. And I really, really do love them quite a lot. So the first one, let's go with this. This is the Pelican M200 Pastel Green. M200 Pastel Green. And there is a hell of a lot of feedback on this Rhodia paper with this nib, which is very surprisingly and unusual. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm not too much of a fan of uh, Rhodia paper these days, because I'm using Oxford optic paper. Anyway, so really, really nice pen. I like it. It's the smallest of Pelican's M series fountain pens. But it posts really well, it posts deeply, securely. It's a full-size, decent fountain pen. Section's not too small, it's comfortable to write with for a very long time. And I've always had one of these. In fact, as you can see, I've had more than one inked up. Uh, Diamine Apple Glory ink. Which is not a favourite colour of mine, but it goes well with this pen. This is the broad nib, as you can see, and it's really, really wet. Nice bright green ink. I really love these fountain pens, and this is another special edition from a few years ago, which I shall make a note of here. Yeah, there's definite feedback on this Rhodia pad. <laughs> Pelican M200 Iconic Blue. Another broad nib in this. I like their broad nibs. Uh, Waterman Inspired Blue ink. Uh, 
really nice pens to write with. And you've got excellent shading, which I shall show you now. Really, really nice shading with these inks and these pens. So, what was the best pen of 2022? Here we go, number one, this. Cheap, the cheapest pen I bought for a very, very, very long time. And the absolute best. This is a fantastic pen. This is a Jinhao 80. Jinhao 80, you know, costs a few pounds, three pounds. Jinhao 80, and I've recently bought more fine Still, no, nothing fancy. Um, and this is Diatramentis Midnight Blue. Superbly reliable fountain pens, lay down ink very well, fine nibs but very wet, and they are just so good. This is another Gen How 80. I have two of these black ones, all black ones with the all black clip, which is sprung like the Lamy 2000, looks like the Lamy 2000. This ink is a diamine ink, diamine amaranth. Fantastic. Why do I love this so much, this fountain pen? Well, the Jinhao 80 is very similar in design to the Lamy 2000. If you watch my Jinhao 80 fountain pen review, you will see a comparison between the Jinhao 80, the Lamy 2000, and also the Lamy Ion, which I believe is one of the more underrated fountain pens from Lamy. So side by side, yes, they do look, look very, very similar. Piston filler, Lamy, gold nib, £150 upwards, writes, well, go and watch my Jinhao 80 review and you'll see why the Lamy 2000 is just not as good as this. You will see how well these write in comparison to the Lamy 2000. These are cartridge converters, you know, you can swap the nib, you can swap these with Lamy nibs if you want unscrew the barrel you've got a converter included in the cost you can fill that with whatever ink you like or you can stick a cartridge in there and this is decent quality plastic it's not cheap thin plastic it's comfortable to hold really really nice pens to use and write with for about three or four pounds at the cheapest if you want to pay a bit more for the different colours which are available, you may find them at about £8.50, something like that. Absolutely, 100% the best fountain pen of 2022. I will love writing with these pens throughout 2023, so I'll already give you a heads up. These will still be in my best fountain pen video of 2023 when that comes out, eventually. So there we go, Jinho 80. Best fountain pen of 2022 because this is what my channel's about. It's about value, it's about good quality, and this is it. Jin Hao definitely pulled it off with the Jin Hao 80 in 2022. These are fantastic fountain pens. Really, really recommended. So on to the bad. It's not all good. What did not do well for me in 2022? A retuned, fourth time around, retuned nib on this Conklin Durograph Amber. And it's probably run out of ink. I'm amazed. No, no, it hasn't. But I'm amazed it even wrote then. Yeah, <laughs> that surprises me. Maybe it's not the worst pen after all. But yes, the, this Amber version, I, I... If anyone's been following my channel for... The last few years you will know what I think of Conklin 
But even retuning the nib yet again. Of course, the bloody thing writes, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. I'll give it a break. I won't keep bashing it. Okay, what did disappoint me? Let's get a clean sheet. Flip this around. This. Schaefer white dot, you know, everything about this should have been good. Schaefer white, that's not the model number. Schaefer icon. The Schaefer icon, why on earth is this such a disappointment? This is the metallic green version. Medium steel nib, octopus inks, teeth grown again. It writes, lays down ink. What's the problem? It's just not very good. Um, I love the design. It's very similar to the Schaefer Tyrannis from a few years ago. Now lo no longer available. Um, you may find second-hand ones, but I don't know. I love the design. I think it's it's an excellent design. It's nice to see Schaefer pulling out a slightly different design. It's a metal pen. It's got an excellent heft to it. Nice weight, pop cap. Love the section. But this nib is just, it, it's not scratchy, but it's just too feedbacky. It's like it's just badly tuned and I need to play around with it. But it's such a tiny, tiny semi-hooded nib with this feed underneath. So you'll see more about this when I review the Schaefer icon. But yeah, biggest disappointment apart from this next pen, which also has a hooded nib. Many of you will probably have already guessed, but the new Parker 51 fountain pen is the worst pen of 2022. It is, oh, for God's sake, hard start. There we go. Parker 51. This is the teal version. And yeah, just writing with this is wanting me is making me want to kill somebody um uh, i'm just going to go straight into it i don't even want to write the ink yes if you keep going you can get decent ink flow it's it's oh it's just yeah to write with it's it hard starts the capping system the, the capping doesn't seem to stop the ink from drying out of the nib. It's a hooded nib. Well, it's supposed to be a hooded nib. It's got this stupid, there we go, stupid lip above the nib. So you've got this hooded concealed nib, black plastic feed. You've got the typical Parker design, Parker 51 design. But my God, get a classic Parker 51 with a vacuum sack, sack filling thing. These are just awful. Steel nib. You can get a gold nib, but you know, you're not you're not buying anything, you're just getting a gold nib. Um, you're just paying a lot more money for a pen which, you know, hard starts. It's it's scratchy. It's it's not feedback, it's just it's just not pleasant to write with. And it's so disappointing because I was looking forward to this pen. Bought it cheap from Amazon. And it's just not worth it. It's, yeah. Reverse writing is possible, but it's just as bad reverse writing as it is normal writing. It's it's, it's terrible. You, you just don't get a good writing experience. So it's Parker cartridges and converters. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so you screw that on. What have you got? Metal. No, you've got a metal band and then plastic threads. What's the cap got? Metal threads. So sooner or later, these are going to get shredded. 
because this pen does not cap particularly well. I mean, you can easily cross thread it. It's cross threaded there. If I gave that too much effort, it's going to strip those threads. Yeah, the design's there, but Jinhao produce very similar um, designs to this, which actually work and write better and don't have all the design flaws and have better quality nibs. It's a disappointment. So the Parker 51, I mean, it, oh, and the other thing is, it sometimes uncaps itself quite easily. These Pelicans cap and uncap really easily, and sometimes the, if you don't give it a little bit of a tighten, it will come uncapped. But they still write. Parker 51 yeah, just decides, uh, I'm not going to write for you today. So, absolutely, definitely the worst pen in my experience of 2022 is the Parker 51. So the best one is this. What, is it? what have I done with them? There we go. Best one, Jin Hao, 80 fountain pen. Worst one, Parker 51 fountain pen. I know it's been a long video. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks very much for watching, and I shall see you next time.